My name is Geraldine Steinberg, but everybody calls me Jerry. And I was on the board from 1974 to 1980. How I got on the board is a very uh, circuitous way. I was never very invo I was never involved in politics, but my husband and I bought a beautiful piece of property in Los Altos Hills, and we had the backdrop of the uh, the, the mountains. I forget now what they're called, but. Um, one evening we were out on our patio and having a cocktail, I think, and all of a sudden I thought I saw trees moving on the top of the mountain. And uh, I'm, a, I'm an attorney. I was an attorney in the county council's office. And I decided to go down to San Jose and to look at the records and I found out that Kaiser Permanente, which was quarrying on the Cupertino side of the mountain, were there for uh, since 1930 or 35, and they were grandfathered in before all the houses were built, and that there was no restriction to stop them from quarrying down the mountain. Well, you can imagine, we had just spent all this money for this beautiful piece of property and the idea that we might be looking into a quarry was pretty, um, pretty upsetting to us. And without really thinking about what I did, I started talking to the neighbors, then I started talking to uh, groups, I had meetings, I talked to uh, city councils, Palo Alto, Mountain View, Los Altos, Los Altos Hills, all of the cities that would be impacted if the mountain came down. Um, I gathered up a, a lot of uh, support and I then went to the uh, supervisor, who was Victor Calvo, and he was very helpful. We went to Kaiser, at the, uh, to the head of the Kaiser. We sat down with him, and I said, I don't want to put you out of business. On the other hand, I don't want a scar that we'd, be, we'd all be looking at. And we were able to come to a, a very uh, acceptable conclusion where Kaiser said they would never take down the mountain below 1,560 feet, that they would um, re, uh, they would take away the scars and replant. And I forgot some of the other conditions, but it was a very, uh, it was a very good, it was a win-win for both sides. About a week after that uh, issue was completed, Victor Calvo called me and said, uh, Jerry, would you like, I have an opening on the Planning Commission, would you like to be on the Planning Commission? And I said, oh, I would, because my husband was an architect, and we moved to California because it was so beautiful. It was all in apricot orchards and walnut orchards. And I was seeing what was happening because people were buying these little lots and putting up houses, and I wanted to have some say into how Santa Clara County was going to develop. So I went on the Planning Commission, and then about two years after that, Victor Calvo decided to run for the California Assembly. And I, um, 
I went to each of the four remaining supervisors and let them know that I really wanted the job. And I remember they said to me, well, Jerry, if we appoint you, do you promise to run? And I was so anxious to get the job, I just said, sure, I'll run, not knowing what was involved. And um, so they appointed me, and I served two years of Victor Calvo's um, unexpired term. And then I had to uh, set up a committee. I had to find a finance chairman. Um, all the things that you have to do when you're running for office. Well, fortunately, I got elected. And uh, then I served a full term of my own. But at the end of that term, my husband said to me, Jerry, I would never tell you what to do. I can only tell you what I'm going to do. And I'm a young man, and you're gone every night. And if I was a traveling salesman, you wouldn't like that. Meaning, I was gone every night. I was going to um, community meetings, to uh, regional meetings. I was so in love with what I was doing that it just encompassed me. But he said, I'm a young man and I'm not going to sit home. I'm going to go out and I just want you to know that. So that was the end of my political career, unfortunately. I, I think I mentioned to you I was on the Planning Commission. And um, I was the first woman ever appointed to the Planning Commission. And my first day when I came to the Planning Commission, um, Mr. Benish uh, greeted me, and we sat through the meeting. And at the end of the meeting, somebody stood up and said, well, this new planning commissioner hasn't said a word. And Mr. Banner said, well, that is, I hope I don't, that is the condition on which we appointed her. <laughs> so that was my, my start. Um, yes, I was the first woman to go on the planning commission, and I was the first woman to become a county supervisor. And that was very exciting. The Mercury News had it front page, uh, front page news. Well, I was an environmentalist and I fought very hard for the environment and how the county was going to be rezoned, particularly that, and my constituency, which was North County, was very aware of the problems of the environment. Um, I was the chairperson of the general, of the Santa Clara County General Plan Revision. And there were about 30 or 35 people on that commission and it took us two years. There were farmers, there were real estate people, there were um, advocates for different points of view. And when we started, it, they were just completely apart. The, the agricultural pre people versus the realtors and various other um, conflicts. And we went through each item. And I think that we all had a common interest in the community. But it took us two years, and we came up with a plan that was unanimously approved by our commission, unanimously approved by the Board of Supervisors, and enacted into law. And I believe as far as I know, 
that much of that general plan is still in existence. I felt that was a tremendous experience and very satisfying. Another item, which was similar but different, uh, South County was starting to grow and people were buying uh, large parcels of land or developers were and cutting them up to little lots and um, I was instrumental in um, rezoning that, that area so that there could, could be a more managed growth rather than just helter-skelter, somebody buying a large piece of property, developing that. And we uh, rezoned the hillsides and I believe that rezoning is still in place. And I got a, um, an award from the, a state conservation group for that, for that particular, um, not problem, that particular re resolution. That's what, another one. I was the only attorney on the Board of Supervisors at the time, and I, I was the advocate for the judges, the court system, the prisons, and I believe I made a difference there. I think that's about While I was there, we bought a, a, the board agreed to buy many, several parks. And I am responsible for buying the open space district's land that was adjacent to a small county park, but now it's a beautiful park called San Antonio Park. And every time I go down 280 and see the turnoff, I feel so good because I feel that was my contribution uh, while I was on the Board of Supervisors that so many people enjoy, er, residents enjoy every day. It, it's very satisfying. I was never going to be a career politician. I was there because I was interested in a local issue that was very important to me. And for anybody who has that wants to give back to the community and feels strongly about the, the community. I would say, I would encourage you, what you get back for what you give is so small, it's so satisfying, it's really a wonderful opportunity that's open to, to anybody that wants to take advantage of it. And I would hope that if I were talking to students, I would give them a lot of encouragement to, uh, to get into politics, not for a career, but just to see that, that things were going in the right direction.